Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today I'd like to continue our discussion on Perforce and talk about how to go about deleting a Perforce workspace. So you might ask yourself, why would you want to delete a workspace? Well, the first most common reason I see people wanting to delete a workspace is that they would just like to simply remove all of these Perforce version controlled files from the hard drive of their machine. So for example, they've gone ahead and left the company that used to use that was using Perforce to control their files and they just want to delete all of these files off of their machine to free up some disk space. The other common reason that I see here is that people would like to move all of the files from one location on their machine to another. They realize that maybe initially they downloaded all of these files to some long file path and now they want to move it to another shorter file path. Truth be told, there are other ways to go about doing this in Perforce, like just resetting your workspace root. But um, truth be told, what I like to do is just go ahead, delete the workspace, clear off all of those files from the machine, and then re-download them in a new location. It turns out to be a lot cleaner. So in a nutshell, these are the two common reasons why you might want to think about deleting a workspace and the associated files from your hard drive. Before we jump into how to go about doing that, it might behoove us to remember this diagram we developed in an earlier video. The way this worked here is it basically outlined the architecture here of a Perforce server, a bunch of clients here which have uh, files on their local machines, and the associated workspaces or the mapping between the files. So the idea here was the Perforce server contained all of these thousands of files here for all these tons of different projects, and then each developer could have multiple workspaces on one or more different machines here. So in this case, the last video, I think we looked at developing and changing this first uh, workspace, which we called for something called Project Alpha here, where they might only want two or three of these depots from the large Perforce server. Now, in this video, what I would like to consider here is, let's say developer A decides that they no longer need to work on Project Alpha. Maybe they've been switched off to a different team here, or they've left the company completely here. So they would like to get rid of this workspace and the associated files from their hard drive. Now, what I'd like to remember here and, and call to your attention right now in this diagram here is, we have to remember that Perforce works in sort of this two-way fashion, right? You can download files from the server to your local machine here, right? But then we've got to remember that as long as those files are under Perforce version control, things you do to those files have the potential to affect the server, right? That's why we have this double arrow here, right? It's a two-way street here. So what I want to do now here is um, I actually want to show you the wrong way to go about this the, I, and the reason I want to show you this is because I see a lot of people doing this and it has uh, a lot of potential ramifications and negative impacts for the server here so I want to take a look at again this is the wrong way to go about removing perforce version controlled files from your machine so don't do this. I just want to show you what a lot of people end up doing and causing a lot of headache downstream. So with that being said, let's jump into, again, the wrong way to go about doing this. All right, so I've got Perforce fired up here, and you can see here that I am right now working on the um, Project Alpha workspace here, right? This is the one we developed in the previous video, and we saw that what this project does here is... Uh, it has mapped three depots, the Arduino, the Australia Bushfire, and the Mapping Depot, and it's copied that down to the local hard drive, as you can kind of see here. So the workspace root, in this case, is just C, Project Alpha here. So we see the physical files here, right? Now, let's pretend I'm this uh, developer that doesn't know any better, and again, I'm going to try to get rid of these files the wrong way. So what I see a lot of people doing is they say, oh, they come over to Perforce and they see, oh, you know what? Here's all of these files here that um, are on my machine. If I want to get rid of them, doesn't that sound like a delete operation? So what they'll do here is they'll go ahead and start themselves a, uh, a new change list, and they'll say something like uh, attempting to remove files from my machine, right? And they'll save this to a to a uh, change list here, and then they'll say, oh, you know what, maybe what I should do is, let's just come up here to the uh, to the depot here, and you know what, hey, here, mark for delete. I will mark that for delete, and the second they say okay, right, they say, oh, hey, look, it went away, right? It deleted from my machine. That is awesome here. 
Um, and then they'll go up and they'll do the next one. They'll say, oh, you know what? I want this thing to be gone as well, so I'll mark this for delete here. And I'll set this here. And there. Uh, oh, look at that. It also deleted from my hard drive. I must be doing the right thing. The problem is, right, you got to remember, this is a two-way street here in the sense that we're still connected to the Perforce server. So what you're actually telling the Perforce server to do here is to delete all all of these files here right luckily they haven't hit submit yet but right now they've marked all of these files for delete here so the server is about to is getting ready to pull the trigger and delete all of these files here if you don't believe me let's go over and look at what this looks like from another developer on this team's perspective here all right so here i am on another machine pretending to be another developer on this uh this team here and i might be just going around doing my business and do 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 and i decide oh you know what i need to make some modifications to the uh australia bushfire depot so i'm gonna go ahead and find myself a file here that i need here and uh Oh, wow. Whoa, look at this. Huh. It's marked for delete here. And if I hover over that, I see, hey, look, it's this other guy here on this Project Alpha workspace that has gone ahead and marked this file for delete. That's weird. And then I'm going to start panicking because if I start looking at all these other files, we see, you know what? Look, that's marked for delete. Heck, every single file in this depot is marked for delete. So at this point, I am going to start getting on the horn and calling that other developer and saying frantically, hey, whatever you do, don't hit submit because for some reason it looks like you have marked every single file for delete in the depot. And if you go ahead and hit submit there, you're going to blow away every file on the depot. I mean, true, we'll be able to revert it, but this is a big pain in the neck here, right? So that other guy um, is, is clearly doing something wrong here. So... Uh, let's go back and see how we can fix this here, and then we're going to take a look at the correct way to go about deleting a Perforce workspace. All right, I'm back, and uh, again, I'm being that silly developer now uh, on the first machine, on my Project Alpha machine, that has gone ahead and marked every single thing for delete. So I just got that angry phone call from the other developer saying, uh, you know what, I've I've messed something up, and I've I'm trying to delete every file on the, on the depot. So uh, I better fix this here. Um, Actually, you know what? Before I fix this, let me show you one more interesting little thing here. Um, let's say that uh, you, you, again, I, I'm, I'm putting on the hat of being that silly developer and I don't know what I'm doing. I'm going to try to delete this entire Arduino depot here. So I'm going to mark this for delete, put it to a change list. And last time we saw when we hit OK, all of those depots, all those files were successfully cleared off of my machine. If I do that here and I hit OK... It all gets marked for delete, but look at this. Actually, not it didn't cleanly remove everything. And the reason why here is if you dig down into this depot, you'll notice that there were some auto-generated files that were created that were not under version control. Those things still get left behind on the hard drive here. All this mark for delete did here is if you notice, it just deleted any file that was under version control. But some of these auto-generated things, like when you compile code, like um, object files or other auto-generated items, they stay on your hard drive. So this is the... I wanted to highlight this point here because remember... We talked about the second most common reason for wanting to delete a Perforce workspace is you want to move all of your files from one location to the other here. So um, here, I just want to point out that sometimes Perforce doesn't clean up well after itself. It doesn't delete all these auto-generated files. So you may need to uh, think about deleting the entire workspace and deleting all the files manually here. All right. Okay. So since we've talked about that here, uh, that small little side note, let's get back to the problem at hand, right? The problem at hand was I have marked every single file for delete, which is clearly the wrong thing to do. So if you've ever got, gotten yourself into this scenario and you got that frantic phone call from another developer on your team saying, whatever you do, do not push this submit button, right? If I were to hit this submit button right now, that is basically telling the server, yes, go ahead and pull the trigger and delete all of those files off the server, Wrong thing to do. So again, do not hit submit. Hit cancel here. And instead, what you want to do here is right click on this and revert everything, right? I want to revert all of these files back. In other words, I want to unmark them for delete. So let me hit revert here. And uh, it may take a little while because I've got all these files here. And uh, yes, I definitely am sure I know what I want to do. I do want to revert them. So I'm going to revert all of these files here.
And again, give this a couple of seconds here because there were a bunch of files that I had marked for delete. Perforce actually has to put them back onto the hard drive here, right? So let's go ahead and pause the video and I'll come back when this uh, this finishes up with the, revert, with the revert operation. Okay, it looks like that revert operation completed and we see that all the files have been restored onto the hard drive here and there's nothing in this change list. Um, this change list was clearly the wrong thing to do. So let's go ahead and first off, let's go ahead and just get rid of this change list. I'll delete that. Okay, we're back to where we started where I'm a user sitting here and I want to go ahead and get rid of all of these files and delete the workspace from my machine here. So, but to do that, let's conceptually talk about how we should go about accomplishing that. So coming back to this diagram, you saw earlier that the problem was we can't make changes to the files on our machine while they're still under Perforce version control. In other words, while there's still this two-way link back to the server. So the first thing we need to do here is we need to get rid of that link here between our local machine and the server. Once we've gotten rid of that link, then these files are no longer under version control and we can go ahead and delete them from our local machine. Thereby, we have gotten rid of those files, but we have not affected any of these other developers or any of the files on the server. So that's the game plan. The way to actually accomplish that now is, all right, first we have to break that link or we have to delete the workspace. So in other words, the way you can go about doing that here is come here to the workspaces tab in P4V. If you don't have that view uh, present, come up here to the view tab and just click on workspaces and you should get this workspace tab showing up. Once you do that, you should be able to see all of the workspaces that are available for this computer. Again, I'll let you play with these filters here to make sure that you're filtering for the uh, yourself, the current user, and only on the workspaces that are available. So what do we have to do is we have to find the link or the workspace that we want to get rid of. It's right here. This is the Project Alpha one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on that here and basically say delete workspace. When you do this here, this is going to say, you know, this, this message might sound scary here, right? It says you're about to delete the workspace from the server. Are you sure you want to continue? You want to say yes, because we are not deleting files. We're just deleting the workspace or we're deleting the link between these files on our local machine here and up to the server. So when I say yes, there, it's gone. Those files, uh, these files now are no longer under Perforce version control here. So I should be able to do whatever I want. In fact, now that I've broken the link between uh, my local machine and the server, you can just select all of these and just go ahead and delete them here using Windows Explorer. And this is a nice, clean, easy way to get rid of these files here. So I delete them. And you know what? Actually, let's, let's go up a level and delete this folder also called Project Alpha. Right? Here it is. Delete this as well. And voila! How simple and easy was that, right? This is the correct way to get rid of uh, Perforce workspaces and the associated files on your machine. So you see, they're gone. We've broken the link here. Nobody else in the team is affected here. So, um, in a nutshell, this, this probably could have been like a 30 second long video here if we didn't go into all of the nuances and details here, but I wanted to highlight um, some of the issues that can happen when you're trying to delete a workspace and if you do it improperly, right? So just to reiterate, let's summarize the right way to go about deleting a Perforce workspace. All right, so to summarize, to delete a Perforce workspace, it's actually ridiculously simple. Step one here is just find that workspace on P4V and delete it, right? So just open up P4V, find the workspace, right click on that workspace and select delete workspace. That breaks the link between your local machine and the server. Once you do that, those files on your local machines are no longer controlled by Perforce. So you can just go ahead and do step two, which is delete all of those files from your local machine just using Windows Explorer. It's a real easy process. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, please subscribe to the channel. We'll have a lot more of different videos related to Perforce and other software tips and tricks here in the future. And with that being said, I hope to catch you at a future video. Bye.